Tonight, Pennsylvania is certified. The transition has begun, but on Trump TV, everything is status quo, and the so-called contested election goes on. My guest tonight is Newsmax CEO and top Trump ally, Christopher Ruddy. Plus, as Joe Biden rolls out his new team, we dig into how he'll try to repair the Trump economy with millions of Americans out of work. And while you're paying attention to the slow churn of the wheels of the Republic, the Trump administration is quietly trying to execute more people on federal death row. I talk to renowned activist sister Helen Prajan. Good evening. I'm Mehdi Hassan. Key battleground states made their results in the presidential election official today as members of the Biden transition were finally unshackled, free for the first time to reach out to their counterparts in every agency of the Trump administration. All this as the current president stayed in a deep state of denial. Joe Biden this afternoon introduced his national security and foreign policy teams. Many of his picks are set to make history if confirmed by the Senate. In experience and in diversity, the Biden team contrasts sharply with Trump's mostly white, mostly male cabinet of mostly temporary acting nominees. Biden and Harris have now passed a record 80 million votes, the first presidential ticket ever to reach that milestone. Swing states Pennsylvania and Nevada certified their election results for Biden today, while North Carolina certified its results for Trump. The president is not contesting the North Carolina vote total. Only Pennsylvania and Nevada where he lost. How odd. Agents on Trump's detail, on his security detail, have reportedly been asked about whether they're interested in relocating to Florida to stay with Trump in his post-presidency life. Good luck to them. The only person, it seems, not aware his post-presidential life is only weeks away is the soon-to-be post-president, whose time out in the glare of daylight today could be measured in seconds. First, as he made the briefest of statements on the economy, and later pardoning a turkey in the Rose Garden. Today, as he has every day, the president of the United States spent most of his time Tweeting, a New York Times analysis shows he has attacked the election results more than 400 times on Twitter since Election Day. Just this morning, he shared nonsensical videos and tweets by the actor Randy Quaid about voter fraud and also his new grievance that Fox and friends aren't friendly enough to him anymore. Yeah, Fox. That beef has helped to fuel the growth of other right-wing media outlets like OAN News and Newsmax, that have been more than happy to help push the fiction that Joe Biden hasn't won the election, giving a platform to Trump and RNC officials who claim Democrats use COVID to remove election safeguards, or that the Republican governor of Georgia is working with the dead president of Venezuela to elect Biden, I kid you not. Did you ever think there'd be a conservative news channel that makes Fox look moderate? Newsmax is the once fringe outlet that's growing in ratings as it amplifies the baseless claims and conspiracies pushed by Trump and his legal team. The success of one, you could say, depends on the success of the other. Chris Ruddy, Newsmax CEO and close friend of the president, has seen his network top one million viewers this month to Fox News' two and a half million, with the goal of overtaking Fox News within a year. Earlier this afternoon, I spoke to Ruddy about the rise of Newsmax and how much damage pro-Trump conspiracy theories are doing to our democracy. Chris Ruddy, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, it's been over two weeks since the election was called for Joe Biden. The presidential transition officially began yesterday with even Donald Trump's blessing. So I'm wondering, have you told your viewers on Newsmax yet that Donald Trump lost the 2020 presidential election? Well, we certainly told our viewers that the president supported the idea of a transition. I certainly supported the idea of an orderly transition. Um, the president has yet to concede, um, but um, I think that there should be preparations. Uh, it looks like uh, Biden's going to win, although that has not been fully uh, declared by the Electoral College. We'd like to see the president make a determination on it as well. Uh, but Newsmax is basing its decisions on the state certifications. Uh, we're planning on certifying Nevada and Michigan today. We already did with 
uh, saying that we had called those for Joe Biden. We called Georgia on Friday. So we're not looking to obstruct the facts. We're just we're waiting for those recounts to come in. But every major media organization called it for Trump based on the t called it for Biden, excuse me, uh, based on the 270 over two weeks ago. Yeah, and I have said that I disagreed with those calls, and I, I did it based on the fact that in five states there was one percent or less of a vote difference, and the challenger Donald Trump was saying that he wanted recounts in each of those states. I think the election was so close. In two of the states, it was less than a half of a percent. In Georgia, it was less than a quarter of a percent. I think he had a right to a recount. I think our job in the media is not to determine elections. We should not arrogate to ourselves the power to do that. It's up to the people and the and the states. And uh, and as those certifications are coming in, we're supporting it. It's funny that you say the media shouldn't decide these things or shouldn't arrogate itself to power. Uh, I went back to look at the Newsmax website homepage uh, back in 2016, the day after the election. Uh, I think we could put their headline up on screen for you to have a look at. Uh, Donald Trump elected president in historic upset. That's the Newsmax website. How come you were willing to call it for Trump in 2016 the next day, but not for Biden in 2020, three weeks later, even though Biden has beaten Trump by a much bigger and clearer margin than Trump beat Clinton? Well, a couple of things. First of all, thank you for showing that. It looks great. Our website gets a huge, huge amount of traffic, uh, Newsmax.com. Um, I think that there was no contest in the 16 election. Hillary immediately conceded on the night of the election. There was no challenge. If Hillary had said that she was going to challenge this in Michigan and Pennsylvania, we would, have, we would have waited to those recounts, and I think the media would have all been on board. You know, in August, Hillary Clinton said that under no circumstances should Joe Biden concede the election if he were to lose the election. Um, I'm not saying that. I think that Donald Trump, if he loses, should concede. Now, he's doing recounts. In the, six, in the 2000 election, he has, he has lost. That's the problem. That's the problem, Chris. Whether he says he has lost or not, I don't think you as the head of news organization should be letting Donald Trump decide the facts. The facts are he I didn't get to 270, should. just as we, Hillary Clinton I don't think neither, didn't get to 270. Betty, I, don't think, Betty, I don't think neither one of us should. I think it's up to the voters and the state officials. And well, that's all I'm the, saying. In the 2000 the election... Is you didn't take that line in 2016. You didn't take that line in 2016, 2000, is my point. And let me be honest, Chris... Watching Newsmax since the election has been honest. like watching a parallel universe with weird, dangerous conspiracy theories about election fraud and voting machines and Hugo Chavez. I want to play an especially ridiculous clip that I saw from Diamond and Silk, who were cut loose even by Fox News for being too extreme for them. Here they are hosting on your network. Have a listen. Yeah. And how is it that all of a sudden Biden is up in these states where the congressional seats, these people didn't have this many votes. This is because, yeah. Form, if you vote Republican, like if you vote red, you're going to vote down the all ticket the way down If ticket. you vote Democrat, you're going to vote uh, down the ticket like that. Yeah. But you're not going to just split. All of these people just didn't split. It don't work like yeah. that. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. I no, believe no. that this whole fiasco was planned, including the China virus. Mm -hmm. All of this was part of the scamdemic for this moment right here. Right here. They Given you yourself have been a journalist, Chris, for more than 30 years, uh, do you feel embarrassed to be running nonsense like that on your network and calling it news? Well, I think it's um, like all the networks and the networks you've been on. There's a lot of opinion hosts, and they have all sorts of things that I don't subscribe to. I do believe in free discourse. I believe in people uh, having their opinion. Uh, we're not saying that that is accurate. In fact, we've gone out of our way in our news of reporting to say we have, you're not, we have you're no You're not saying evidence. your own shows are accurate. We, we have gone out of our way to say we have no evidence that the Dominion software was, was manipulated in any way. We are reporting what people are saying, like the Trump campaign. We're not necessarily embracing it. You know, you work for MSNBC as a sister network to Peacock. For two years, they pushed a, a theory, a conspiracy theory involving Russia turned out to be a hoax that the president collaborated with Russia. And that was done by both your news okay. division and your opinion host. So, you know, I think I the mean, job of reporters... I, I don't... Uh... 
I, I think I think the arguments about Russia are, are much more factually based than claiming the pandemic is a scamdemic. I think was what Diamond and Silk were saying a moment ago. Also, I don't speak for the NBC News divisions, Max, but last time please. I checked, they haven't given money to a political party. Newsmax gave fifty thousand dollars to Republican Susan Collins without disclosing it on air. So there are questions about the news organization oh. that you run. And what I wanted to ask you is this: When uh, history looks you're... back on Newsmax's role, and let me ask a question, Chris. When new, history looks back on this undemocratic moment, to quote Mitt Romney, uh, when many Republicans were trying to overturn a free and fair election. Will you be proud of what you put on air? You put Sidney Powell, a QAnon supporting lawyer for Trump, on air. And she was saying that Hugo Chavez and well, the head of the CIA was, rigged the election for Joe Biden. Are you proud of you that? Know, she's, she's a prominent attorney that filed on this. She's a former U.S. attorney. Again, I think the public can make a decision rather than you or I as to the uh, quality of the information she's giving and whether she's legitimate I'm, or not. I'm happy to make a decision but that Hugo Chavez go, was not involved in the election, Chris. I'm happy to I make think you will find every major media company in the United States has made political donations, and they haven't declared them in their news reporting. So don't accuse me for, for one donation that's saying that somehow I'm doing something improper. Uh, NBC News has not donated to any sitting senator. I can give you that 100% well, guarantee. Let me ask you this question. You admit, I'm, I'm, you come, you, let me I'm ask sure you this question. Many, you come many... on shows like this. I've, I've been watching a lot of your, I've been watching a lot of your interviews recently in preparation for this. And you've been saying, and you said in this election too, you know, whether Donald Trump overturns it or not, you, you're not even sure yourself. Uh, isn't the problem that you yourself say, look, it's unlikely he's going to overturn leave you on record saying that. Yet your top-rated host at Newsmax, Greg Kelly, said to your viewers last week, this whole idea of a president-elect, it is a media fabrication. This is not done. This thing could turn. Your critics would say, Chris, it's a pretty cynical move. You know Trump hasn't won and can't win, but you're telling your viewers the exact opposite to make them feel good, to give them false hope, and to win more of them well, over from Fox News. I have That's my opinion. This is. It's all a cynical commercial strategy. Yeah. No, it's not cynical at all. And you know that in your network or other networks or MSNBC, I wouldn't think that the people that own Comcast or run Comcast share the same views as Rachel Maddow. This is common sense. And to suggest that I somehow have Greg Kelly's view, he's entitled to his view. He's a former uh, White House correspondent. He's been in journalism for many years. Uh, the son of the New York City police commissioner is a great guy and a great uh, host, but he's entitled to views. I don't subscribe to everything. He, and his position is he thinks that that the president has a shot. He hasn't said he's definitely going to win. Uh, I personally think it's going to be an uphill battle. I've said that several times. There's several states in contention. Be very difficult to change the vote. All I'm saying, <laughs> not, Betty, there is that several the, the president should have a Chris. recount, just like Al Gore had one. In the, he in did the have a recount in Georgia. Oh. Chris, he had right. a recount in Georgia. The Republican Secretary of State who came on this show said there was no fraud. Uh, he lost the recount and in Georgia. We, the Florida example of 2000 is... The Florida example, Chris... The Florida example, you know, I know you like to bring it up. Bush's own lawyers from 2000, Ted Olson, Barry Richard, Ben Ginsburg, have all said there is no comparison to Florida. This election is over. We're going to run out of time. I need to ask you this question. When you say the president calls you up to congratulate you on your good work, when you say on Twitter, quote, he's wowed by Newsmax TV's ratings and big buzz, surely you understand that you don't sound like a news organization there. You kind of sound like state TV, like a propaganda channel for the president. We have an editorial point of view, which we're honest about. I think CNN and MSNBC have been pretty pretty pro-Democrat if you go down the line. We probably have a lot more critics of the president on Newsmax on any given day. Uh, Joe Connison, a very famous liberal journalist, is a contributor to Newsmax. We have Ellis Helnick and a whole bunch of people come on criticizing Mark Halpern has come on, criticizing the president of the United States day and night. Um, I think that the president was very impressed with our ratings as a news thing, and he, he didn't call me to say congratulated for our work. He said he congratulated yeah. our ratings. I think that's fine. He's done that probably with liberal media on their ratings. Um, it, it's no indication that we're—I mean, I think it's sort of unfair that you're doing that. 
I think we've been critical of the president at times. I mean, it's unfair, will... it's unfair for you, Chris. I know, we're, we're, Chris, it's unfair for you to say it's just like CNN and NBC. You know that the CEOs of CNN and NBC have not gone on Twitter or anywhere else and said, President Biden, President Biden has called us and loves our stuff. They just don't say stuff like that. You know that. And just one last well, thing. I know you have to go. So one last question. Talk your, talk your phone call. I, I... You do, you, you certainly do do things differently, and I yes. played some clips showing been, how different you do it. Great, one last question. We're now the fourth, one last question, now because I know you have to run. We're the fourth largest cable news channel in the United States, and we're a lot bigger than Peacock, so millions and millions of people are tuning yes. into Newsmax, I, I and mean, they, I, I, they, they don't Chris, trust I'll, news I'll, sources Chris, like I'll take, NBC. I'll take... <laughs> Chris, so I'll, I know I'll that, take facts over ratings any day of the week. But let me ask you one. I know it's very, very It's not frustrating, Chris. Chris, no, you, you, have ra- you, you take the ratings. It. I'll take the facts. You sound very angry I, about it. I'm not it. angry about it. I'm, I'm, I, congratulations I on your ratings, Chris. I think it's great that people are tuning uh, I'm in. I'm saying the facts I want matter the more, more than ratings. The, I think it's the more information the public has, the better. Agreed, but I think I, I think I agree with you. Information is important. Conspiracy theories are not. Last question. I know you have to run. You You've been getting phone calls from the president. Theory. You're dubbed, you're dubbed the Trump whisperer because of your close ties to the president. Can I ask you this, Chris? When was the last time you and he spoke, and what kind of mood was he? And I assume a very bad one. Well, I don't detail all my conversations. I did speak to him last week, and I think he's been pretty confident about his situation. We don't go into great details on it. The conversations are typically brief. I've known him for many years. Um, and uh, before he was really a political figure, we were friends and um, and um, that's it. There wasn't any, any real uh, top secret information shared. <laughs> Chris Ruddy, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it.